Uh, Commissioner Chung. Here. Commissioner Guillermo. Present. And Commissioner Chow. Present. I will read the land acknowledgement. The San Francisco Health Commission acknowledges that we are on the unceded ancestral homeland of the Ramatosho Ohlone, who are the original inhabitants of the San Francisco Peninsula. As the indigenous stewards of this land and in accordance with their traditions, the Ramatosho Ohlone have never ceded, lost, nor forgotten their responsibilities as caretakers of this place, as well as for all peoples who reside in their traditional territory. As guests, we recognize that we benefit from living and working on their traditional homeland. We wish to pay our respects by acknowledging the ancestors, elders, and relatives of the Ramatosho Ohlone community and by affirming their sovereign rights as First Peoples. We can move on to item two, which is the approval of the October 7, 2023 minutes. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes? Uh, move to approve. A second. Okay, um, all in favor, please oh, say aye. Oh, actually, may I check for public comment? The comment. Uh, and commissioners, actually, just to let you know, the, to follow up on the 2024 calendar issue, Commissioner Green is working with me, uh, me and Director Colfax to move some of those to the full commission, and we will loop back with you once we're checking with Mr. Wagner and Dr., uh, Director Colfax. Thank uh, you. Person on the line, if you'd like to make comment on this item, which is item two, please press star three. And any, anyone in the room like to make public comment? No. All right, so um, we can go to a vote. Uh, Commissioner Chow, I'll start with you. Uh, yes. And then uh, commissioners in the room, um, please say aye. 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 Okay, fantastic, great. And then we can move on to item three, the monthly contracts report. Dean, uh, Dean Goodwin, Mr. Uh, um, we have 12 um, items in the monthly uh, commission report um, and seven uh, health commission amounts for new contracts. Process. The first item we have is for a and a health services uh, requested action is the approval of a new agreement with a and a uh, contract ID number 30486 for a total contract amount with contingency of 5,597,200 for a contract term of. July 1, 23 through 6, 30, 24 for one year. While this is a new contract, it is for continued services that were previously approved at the June 1st, 2021 Health Commission meeting under contract ID 21416. The program provides rehabilitative, rehabilitative board and care residential services. The prior contract uh, not to exceed amount with contingency and the prior annual amount with contingency are from the previously approved contract for these same services uh, with the same provider. Um, which ended on 6 30 23 and is provided for comparison purposes only. Please note that the prior contract was for a two year total term, while the new contract is for one year only. The purchasing authority for these services is delegated purchasing authority uh, under Administrative Code Section 21.04 A1. Um, the reason for the funding change um, uh, is the uh, change in the total contract amount with contingency and the change in the term. Uh, there was a question we received by email yesterday um, the con uh, asking about the contract being retroactive to July. Um, then there's no history of whether services over the past two years were satisfactory. Please provide more information on their past performances. Um, we sent some of these responses through Mark earlier. Um, the response to this question is that typically uh, this type of program has been subject to BOCC annual monitoring, has not been subject to BOCC annual monitoring. The reason being that they uh, generally for housing programs, we have utilization review done with respect to the individual clients. And if the site is unsatisfactory, we move them. Um, in this case, uh, we brought a and health services on as a pilot. Uh, we have Luis Calderon, who's the acting deputy director of transitions, who is attending virtually and can elaborate further on this uh, answer uh, and answer any other questions you may have about this contract. Do we have a Luis on the line? Uh, Luis is here, uh, but uh, do we need to, are, are there questions that need to be answered? Or are we waiting for him to answer questions? I responded in general. I just wanted to see if there was anything Luis wanted to add. Okay. No, just that we continue to evaluate this contract on a regular basis, at least once a month, uh, usually actually twice a month uh, staff visits the facility. We have, sir, we have total numbers and we are finally getting reports out of Epic. All the information has been input into EPIC, um, and we're finally getting those reports, and sh we should be able to provide in the next fiscal year and the next quarter now, um, the total number of clients served, admissions, referral, where are they, com where are they coming 
from and where they are going to be exiting. So far to, the, to, to, the, to date, we have served 106 clients. Um, we have uh, 49 beds at Victoria's house here in San Francisco, and we have now a total of 10 beds officially budgeted for this fiscal year, although we currently have 13 clients at the San Pablo facility. We originally were budgeted for the first fiscal year for 30, and it was reduced to 10 coming this coming fiscal year. Thank you, Luis. Commissioners, any questions or comments? Yeah, my one. Commissioner oh, Chow, um, his hand up. Yeah, my one question was, uh, <clears throat> and, and these are important services, but um, do we have a reason that this was retroactive and during the retroactivity period, because it's like almost four months, uh, does that mean that they don't get paid or, uh, you know, what, what, what happened there? The explanation of the services is very good. Thank you. Actually, Commissioner, you're right. They did not get paid. Uh, they had to come out with a loan for those services. But uh, in the meantime, and this was um, part of the urgency of why we were trying to get the, the contract uh, ratified. And direct voucher payments were made to this provider um, in the interim as well. And, and, and so we're going to try to avoid that again, uh, Mr. Goodwin. Uh, I, I mean, you've, you've been doing pretty well in terms of not having a lot of retro, but this one seemed, you know, I mean, we're making the contractors then sort of spawn, uh, fund this, right, <laughs> while we're trying to get the contract through. Yes. I, I share the same sentiment because, like, a, a, according to um, Mr. Calderon, um, they have to take out a loan. So there's always interest charged to a loan. And so does that become part of the cost of the contract or they have to actually eat up that? I believe that this is the case where the payment has come in just when the loan was being issued. So the interim emergency payments were, were issued on, right on time. Okay, so there's no like early payment and all that penalty, okay. Yeah. Don't believe so, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just like a little bit. We, we were rushing to process the um, direct payment voucher to provide cash infusion for this contract. So the documents could be received in a contract that set up in place. And as Louise mentioned, it got to them yeah. just in time. So they... Yeah, and I'm not trying to put us on the spot, but, you know, but then, you know, like the optic looks kind of like this is an afterthought you know like that the contract should have been re, um you know like re renewed or you know extended you know by by that um the first contract end date um but it didn't happen so and also um, just one thing to point out um when there's something reason for funding change the request from the department to approve a, a contract amount is not a reason for funding change Okay, so yeah, so so that's it. I'm a nerd, sorry. <laughs> Me as well. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, let's go to the next contract. Thank you. Okay, the next item is for health advocates. This is a contract with the San Francisco Health Network. Uh, requested action is the approval of a new contract with the existing vendor uh, for the same services. Um, health advocates was originally sourced through RFP 16 2012 and has been DPH vendor uh, since 2014. On June 20th, 2023, DPH issued RFP uh, 8427 for on uncompensated care for recovery services. The whole section over here. Sorry, hearing voices. Um, um, David, any means here? Uh, Hold on, I'm going. I'm going to uh, silence. Or continue, please. The new contract term and options were authorized under uh, uh, RFP 8427, uh, which Health Advocates was uh, selected as the vendor. Total contract amount with contingency to an amount of 11,391,540, with a proposed contract initial term from 1124 to 1231, 2028 for five years plus options to renew for four more years. The options will only be exercised if the department has a need and funding is available. The health commission previously approved the prior contract on September 5th, 2023, just a couple months ago. Health Advocates provides uncompensated care reimbursement recovery services, which assists the DPH in developing sources of reimbursement and further reduces the percentage of patients in this health pay 
and charity care categories. Um, from July 2019 to June 2023, uh, Health Advocates LLC, the estimated total reimbursement recovery revenue is $73,509,073 uh, with an annual average of $18,377268. Um, this proposed amendment is subject to approval by the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. The item has returned to the Health Commission again after being approved in September to align the contracting fund details with what have evolved prior to the contract uh, appearing at the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. Um, we are requesting approval of this in the total amount as stated, 11391541 which includes contingency of $1,220,522. Um, the change in the total contract amount is due to the differences in contract length of the new contract. Um, and the department is estimating and the amount the department is estimating for services to increase. Um, and you have details there in your written report of the uh, estimated budget increases for each year that follows from 2024 through 2028. You have uh, any additional questions? We have Janine Smith, manager of patient financial services department at uh, Zuckerberg SFG to respond to any questions you have. I have a question. A couple questions, actually. The uh, the total reimbursement uh, amount is that a is that a net amount on an annual or a, a total of seventy three five or and eighteen three seven? Is that a net of the fees that we pay to health? I will pause and let Janine Smith respond to that to make sure we get the actual response. There is Janine on the line. Uh, she is. Yes, I've unmuted you, Jean. Uh, Janine. Can you? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Can you please repeat the question? Thank you. Just wondering if the recovery uh, revenue uh, figures that you have there is, are those uh, net of the uh, contract fees that we pay to health advocates, or is that a gross amount? I believe that's the the net amount. Um, after the invoicing that they are reimbursed for for their services but i can definitely confirm that okay and then just one other question is there uh, any way that you you uh calculate um what the uh recovery amount is um the ratio of the recovery amount to the total possible uh reimbursement or does health advocates do that I'm just wondering about, you know, how successful uh, or if we project at all uh, what the recovery amount could be and then what we're getting re relative to that. That's a really good question. Janine, is there projections of the ratio of the recovery amount compared to the amount of the contract expenses or is that something we could calculate and follow up with? Yeah, I would like to follow up on that um, just to, yeah, to confirm where we we're able to address that. I mean, I know that's, you know, I mean, it, it's got to be some kind of formula that you use. And if you don't, then it might be helpful to in the future have that and then mm -hmm. just to see a trend line uh, on how successful, because it looks like a great amount, but it's all relative, right? So. Right. I mean, that is a very large amount, but we'll, we'll calculate the ratio and look at a couple of years, perhaps, if we're able and get that back to you in the next couple of weeks. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Janine, any other questions? Any other questions? Seeing none, we will move to the next. Okay, the third item is for uh, Hatchwell Tabernick and Associates, uh, also known as HTA. Requested action is the approval of a contract amendment with HTA to in increase the total contract amount with contingency to reflect an amount of 3927282 um, the contract term of July 1, 2020 through 63025 for seven years is unchanged. Contract was previously approved by the Health Commission on August 1st, 2017. HTA will continue to support and coordinate DPH data collection activities and program planning and to provide technical assistance with various special projects. The proposed amendment is authorized under RFQ 36-2017. Um, the uh, the reason for the funding change is due to additional funding being made available for fiscal years 23, 24, and 24, 25. We received a question on this yesterday as well, um, asking what is the reason for the 21% annual increase in program funding. Um, the program staff responded 
um, which I sent back in the email earlier of that, uh, confirmed that the 21% increase to the HTA contract was uh, addition of general fund dollars for the program to provide funding for the care coordination and transition, transitions management CCMT evaluation component of the program. Um, and we should have on the line um, Jessica Brown, Director of the Office of Justice, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion, as well as the Mental Health Services Act System of Care, if you have any additional questions. So just get some clarification here, because like when I look at the funding sources, it says Manage Care, Mental Health Services Act, Grant, and Work Order. So, and you just mentioned general fund, is Work Order general fund? Uh, yes, typically work order is general fund, yes, because it's coming from another city department. Thank you. Any other questions, commissioners? Okay, let's move on. Item four, the Bayview Hunters Point Foundation, this is a BHS contract. Requested action is the approval of a new contract. The new contract term and options are authorized under RFGA uh, 7781 for MHSA school based mental health programs for which Bayview Hunters Point was selected as one of the vendors. Um, the program was previously part of a larger contract with Bayview Hunters Point Foundation, um, contract ID number uh, 11308, which was approved by the Health Commission on May 2nd of 2023. Um, the Bayview Hunters Point contract with this program was previously uh, funded under, continues to be the other programs in the contract that this new contract was previously funded under, uh, continue in that former contract. Um, um, the total contract amount uh, for this contract is 2060685 with a proposed contract term of five years from July 1, 23 through June 30th of 2028, plus options for four more years to renewal. Um, the option will only be exercised for the department as a need of funding is available. Um, we received questions on this uh, contract regarding what was the previous annual allocated amount for these services. Why is the client satisfaction survey renewed, reviewed only by the agency? And should this not also be reviewed by the department? Um, and please give some context about the Bayview Hunters Point uh, remaining in non-compliance in the fiscal audit. So I'll, I'll break down those three questions. Um, the first um, was that the Bayview Hunters Point program was funded to provide uh, BHS services at Balboa High School which was funded at a level of $316,000. Um, after the competitive solicitation of RFGA 7781 was conducted, um, the Bayview Hunters Point Foundation um, lost that funding. Um, for fiscal year 23-24, meanwhile, after the solicitation of 7781, um, they gained uh, funding for another program for trauma and recovery services uh, at the high school, uh, which is at a different funding level of $204,000. Um, that's the, the difference in the prior funding, but those were also different programs. Um, these are two different programs at two different fiscal years with different funding levels. The previous vendor for the former services, the urban services at the YMCA, was funded at $217,000. The difference in $13,000 was for medical-related costs, which were in the YMCA contract, and this funding was moved to the Bayview Hunters Point Foundation outpatient program for the current fiscal year. There was actually um, an error in the write-up of the program details in this report. The current write-up indicates that the continuing um, Bayview Hunters Point Foundation services um, uh, are were previously in a different contract. However, that's not actually correct as I just described. The, B the Bayview Hunters Point previously provided two staff to support the Balboa Teen Center, which was a fiscal intermediary relationship with primary care, which was what was in the prior contract. However, following the solicitation, uh, Rafiki was selected to provide this service um, on an ongoing basis under Program A-1, Behavioral Health Services at Alboa High School. Um, and Bayview Hunters Point was selected under Program 1B for trauma and recovery services for the high school students and their families. Um, in being selected, they replaced the Urban Services YMCA, which I referenced earlier, which was a prior services of the, of, 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 for those services. The bottom line is that these are continuing services, but with a new vendor, which also means that the prior monitoring report was actually for the wrong program, because it was for the teen, teen clinic. Um, for fiscal year 22-23, um, related to the survey questions, um, its survey is not a mandated survey for the Medi-Cal clients and families, rather the survey that the Bayview Hunters Point uh, uh, teen clinic conducted 
Um, thus, the agency reviewed the survey first, then entered the results into the MHSA year and prior reports, part of the performance objectives evaluation. Um, at that point, both MHSA and CYF system of care did review the survey results in full. Um, regarding the question about the monitoring reports and um, if they're not re uh, reviewed by the department or not, um, each year, the annual BOCC performance monitoring evaluates four components um, for programs, um, which one of those being client sat satisfaction survey. Uh, programs are required to conduct a client satisfaction survey annually. The outcome is rated as a component and towards the full program score. Um, the annual monitoring reports are routed for approval and signature internally in DPH. So the scoring and comment is, is presented to DPH as a formal procedure. Another component of the annual monitoring is measuring compliance with a number of requirements that include review the documents saved in the program's admin folder. Um, one of the items that is required is that the minutes of the agency's board meeting uh, document that the results of the client satisfaction survey have been shared. So that's why we are, are, uh, often have a reference in the um, performance summary of if a client satisfaction survey was conducted and if the results were reviewed by the agency, because that's a requirement and that's something that's noted in the report. So that's typically why we share that information. Um, that those client satisfaction surveys are also reviewed by the system of care through a later and different process. But I just wanted to clarify that just because we note in the performance backup uh, summary that it was reviewed, that the client satisfaction survey was conducted and reviewed by the agency, does not mean to communicate that the department has not reviewed. But that's just part of the evaluative process of client satisfaction survey component within the BOCC monitoring report, which is a lot. It's a, it's a lot to, to try to take in at a moment's notice in terms of the questions that were asked. Um, but I had had I don't know if the, uh, I had another a couple questions. Uh, one, you you didn't answer the one question about the non-compliance on the audit. Uh, Wasim Samara from the BOCC uh, section, who's the fiscal analyst, who can respond a little bit more to that question. So it's on the report that he provided. So for the, um, so the, the agency had, they had significant turnover in their finance department and, you know, that caused some of the delays. And I believe there was some delays caused from the auditors themselves, the CPA auditors. So the agency are, is trying to wrap up the fiscal year 21, 22 um, by the end of this month. And then they're gonna, they procured for a new auditor. So, you know, they're gonna jump right into the new audit that's gonna be for fiscal year 22, 23. Um, you know, as of the communication I got from them is that they believe that for the Fiscal year 22, 23, they will finish it within the nine months timeline, which, which will be March of 2024. So we will check back with them. Obviously, uh, whenever they finish the audit, they're going to forward that to us. And then next year uh, in March or in April, we will check back on their progress on the 22, 23 to make sure that they finish that within the timeline. So, so my concern is we're being asked to approve a contract extension or a, to to twenty to twenty twenty eight, if the audit shows that there are some sort of structural issues, uh, will we be able to provide timely support to the organization such that they'll be able to perform on the contract? Um, they'll have the resources to do that because again, I don't want to set up an agency for failure, or for you know difficult times ahead if we don't find out until later that there are some things that we could have helped with or that they we could have supported and they're not able to yeah so, i think, I think yeah. part of it is this is very complex okay. in terms of you know it shows as a new contract a new agreement you know for continuing service and it sounded like you know like before this you know like they were applying you know they they got funded with you know, like um, some kind of consortiums or whatnot. And so, but there's no showing here, like how, how that looks, you know, it totally says that it's a new contract. There were no um, 
current total contract and um, and there are no changes in the contract. So, but all the all the information we're getting here is before July twenty J July first, twenty twenty three. So, so reading this becomes a confusion for some of us, or maybe for all of us. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, we we do review their drafts of financials. So if there's, um, you know, real, uh, obviously we won't know the the exact results of the audit. If there's like a um, you know major concern in their, um, in their true you know the true numbers that they give us, but we do re review the draft even though they did not you know fully complete the audit uh, to make sure that they're not. You know, falling off a like fiscal cliff. Bayview Hunters Point is, you know, one of the agencies that were constantly actually they already have a technical assistant engagement with DBH, and um, we're monitoring that agency closely, and we're constantly meeting with them. And uh, I even uh, I believe they're restructuring some of their contracts to to, to make sure that they, you know. That we, uh, how you mentioned, we don't set them up for failure. That they, um, you know, continue to do better. They, they have, things have improved for them in the last two, two or three years, and now we're kind of in the monitoring process just to make sure that things keep going in the right direction. All right, you know, I think that, uh, uh, Madam Chair, that this goes to your uh, previous discussion in your minutes from last month and the whole issue of these large contracts and, and, uh, and how both the city and then DPH, because they have a number of other city contracts and, and here we're, we're looking at a very small portion of it. Uh, I, I, I think it's, it, it's really sort of needed that, uh, uh, we're also dividing finance from from delivery of service and outcomes and uh, somehow every everybody's getting a little piece of the pie, but it's almost like you know uh, a blind man looking at an elephant, right? Uh, and and so I'm hoping that as uh, uh, our officers and Dr. Colfax look at how we could best present uh, how we can avoid. Uh, uh, Certainly, want to avoid failure in an important uh, agency, and this isn't just a two-year problem. This is a many-year problem uh, from uh, Bayview, and it's not simply their fault. And and we have several other contracts uh, of a similar nature that we have a better way of trying to uh, assure that we feel that we really have a pulse on the fiscal. And we're not just looking at a 200,000 block and then another segment of our organization looks at 500,000 and over there homeless is looking at a million uh, that they have at stake. But uh, we, we have a, a better way of understanding how our uh, mega contractors are really performing uh, both uh, in uh, 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 the aggregate and, and obviously uh, in each of these contracts with outcomes. So. That's, I think, where uh, those discussions uh, might uh, be helpful for all of us, as uh, uh, it was noted that uh, it's going to be, uh, you know, worked on at this point. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other questions on this uh, contract, Commissioners? We, we also, I wanted to also uh, introduce that we have uh, Farinaz Faraman, Director of the Children, Youth, and Family System of Care and Mintam. Who's the director of the school based mental health services and the children, youth and family system of care if they have anything to add or if you have any um, additional questions for them. My only point would be just to reiterate what uh, Commissioner Chow uh, mentioned that it is an ongoing concern for us, knowing that we rely on certain agencies uh, to provide important services ongoingly and we don't want any interruption to those services because there's been a lack of coordination as a funder. Or as funders uh, in being able to both make sure that the fiscal health as well as the programmatic excellence and ability to provide services are uh, you know aren't looked at together uh, and so this isn't uh, this isn't trying to um, criticize it's really to encourage right that coordination and I know that there's more of it happening uh, and so we just want to continue to encourage and support that 
let's move on to the next. Okay. Thing. Item number five, San Francisco Public Health Foundation on safety PHIT contract. The requested action is approval of a new contract agreement uh, with the San Francisco Public Health Foundation for a contract with contingency of one million eight hundred fifty-three eight hundred and forty dollars uh, for a funding term of November fifteenth, twenty twenty-three through six thirty twenty-four. While this is a new contract, the San Francisco Public Health Foundation has previously continued to provide program administration services. Uh, this contract will provide for the program administration of the EPIC BHS project CBO device program. Uh, the San Francisco Public Health Foundation's indirect cost rate is 15% of the annual funding amount of, of uh, 1,655,214. Uh, 215,897 will be for um, indirect charges. 27,961 will be for personnel costs associated with, associated with the project. And 1,439,317 is for the direct services. A uh, new agreement is authorized under administrative sole source 21.42 and the new funding will continue to support program administration. Um, if you have any uh, questions about this contract or the services, we have Jeff Scarafia, who's the deputy CIO who is attending virtually and can respond to any program questions you might have. Uh, I, I just thought of a question uh, that uh, uh, came up. Uh, this sort of provides these iPads to our different uh, CBOs, as I understand, which then allows us to use the, uh, them to use the EPIC system so the data can be in the system. Uh, is this a one time or is there going to be some sort of yearly or annual support for this that we're going to be seeing? This is a one time effort uh, that goes along with the EHR modernization project and the shift of our uh, BHS areas, so that includes mental health and substance use, uh, transitioning to EPIC. Those ads are specific, specifically to support e-signature needs. Uh, iPads provide e-signature capabilities to go along with EPIC. Okay, and so then the CBOs will be maintaining their system, or we're going to continue to provide support, or actually because these are so simple we don't have to provide anything and they can take care of it future equipment needs whether that be ipads computers printers <laughs> or, or any of the technology that we use on a day-to-day -day basis to support our operations will be the responsibility of the community-based organizations uh, who are under contract with the city so in other words commissioner it is still a one-time effort where we are providing those options uh, to go along with that, but we will support the CBOs uh, as they purchase new equipment, expand to new offices, et cetera. Sure, uh, no, I, I think that's very helpful. And this, of course, was something that we're all looking forward to. So thank you. Any other questions? Yes, I do. So this is a one time program and, you know, like, and these are like um, devices that are epic and um, and HIPAA compatible. But if it's a one time project, what about the ongoing prevention, you know, of data leak? Like, I'm, I'm assuming it's an iPad, so it will be on Wi-Fi. So is the Wi-Fi part of our virtual private network ourselves or is it? their, you know, their internet um, access. So, so yeah, so it's the nerd in me again. Yeah. <laughs> but, okay. So yeah, so like HIPAA is really sensitive and, um, and how do we make sure that, you know, like it can continue to sustain. Got it. Um, Jeff, would you like to respond to that? Yeah, for those areas, we use a technology that's called mobile device management. It allows us to remotely manage features and functions associated with iPad or other mobile devices like iPhones, Android devices, et cetera. Uh, that's how we maintain a lot of the HIPAA compliance by A, making sure that no HIPAA data is ever stored on the iPad, aka if that gets disappeared uh, in any fashion. Uh, we can probably wipe it. Uh, and make sure that no data is on it. Two, you asked about the Wi-Fi. 
Uh, the Wi-Fi itself does not need to be on our virtual private network in order to securely communicate. It's actually the Epic apps on iPad. So, Commissioner, for example, you could download one of the Epic apps on your personal cell phone and use it from there. It's the communication between the app and the Epic server that is encrypted to ensure that, again, we maintain HIPAA compliance and security of that data. This relates to your questions in terms of saying, how do we support that in the future? Should these devices ever need to be, um, you know, iPads and other equipment get old uh, and those batteries die? I've had to replace a few of my own uh, in, in my span there. So from that perspective, uh, we do have a process by which uh, CBOs can enroll one of those purchased iPads with the IT department in DPH to ensure they have secure access to Epic. Uh, from an example perspective, we use that today with all writers where they're able to enroll their personal cell phones to access Epic uh, to cosign orders or take call for the hospital. So, so I'm assuming that, you know, like all the data, you know, like between the iPad and, you know, the, the cloud that store these data are like encrypted, highly encrypted. You, you are correct. Um, one, the data is always stored on the Epic servers that we control. It's never stored on the iPhone, the iPad, or the personal cell phone. Uh, so there's the storage aspect. And then as you were pointing out, communication does use secure encryption between the device and the subject servers we're talking about. Thank you. Sorry, just one relate, last related question on that. Uh, if there are other, other users uh, that are not necessarily using the device for uh, Epic or for data uh, um, collection uh, that's going directly to the servers uh, here, if there's other sign-ons, how are we protecting potential hacks that might occur if or uh, if the um, sort of a backdoor or something else is being uh, used to sort of enter in. So are there, is there training going on from the department uh, to the CBOs on protecting uh, the use of the device or the equipment uh, that's not necessarily being used for Epic or is there not an ability to use the device for anything other than uh, data? Uh, 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 medical records and so on. Yeah, you guys ask tough questions there, <laughs> but to your point, yes, uh, that falls back to the uh, technology called mobile device management that we use to control these devices. Uh, so I don't know if you guys use Android or Apple in your personal lives, but if you've ever been to the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store, those are not available on these iPads. The only apps that they can run are the apps that DPH IT controls and publishes to them. I don't want to say that's strictly limited to Epic, but again, it's it's Epic and other items that we use here at DPH uh, to facilitate those portions. So you can't download other apps, other games, and have other logons. Understood, but there are instances where personal data has been uh, hacked and not necessarily through the through the app uh, directly. Uh, it's through the sign-on to the device or the equipment. And so I'm just I'm I'm just extending this. Correct. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I better understand your question now. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, to your to the point, the devices that we are providing are essentially uh, a digital clipboard. They're not necessarily a like you would use a computer to log into the EHR and perform your work. It's more of the digital clipboard aspect where uh, when a patient arrives at the front desk, they may have several forms that you've filled out in a doctor's office before uh, on a paper clipboard. So we take the iPads, we point them at a QR code on our screen, and it is temporarily associated with a single patient that is time limited 
and the patient must enter some identifying elements, such as the date of birth, as we hand the iPad to confirm their identity before responding to those portions. So I think the, some of the points we would get is you can't log into Epic and access additional information uh, using these iPads from that perspective. It's much more limited to, uh, again, it would be as if we took some forms, put them on a clipboard, you would only have access to the forms that are on the clipboard. That would be the analogy I would use. Thank you. Uh, I'll ask other questions by uh, email. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. I, I have more questions, but I I'll keep those questions to myself right now. Feel free to send them after we can follow up as well. <clears throat> Item number seven. Oh, sorry. I skipped number six. Shanti project. This is an HIV health services contract. A uh, requested action is the approval of a contract amendment with Shanti project to increase the total contract amount with contingency to an amount of 1,910,211. Um, the funding term of July 1, 2017 through 22825 uh, uh, a length of seven years and eight months remains the same. Shanti project provides for integrated medical case management activities. The proposed amendment exercises options authorized under RFP 23-2017 um, as a funding authority. Funding will continue to provide support under the medical case management and the uh, hep C prevention and control modalities. Um, the reason for the funding change the department is requesting uh, the approval of a total contract amount as stated of 1,910,211, uh, which is an increase of $227,581 due to the following um, uh, a one time Ryan White Part A ending the HIV epidemic grant funding increase in the amount of $259,020 and a decrease in the amount of $31,439 to the 12% contingency value applied to current and future funding. Uh, the, current the current contingency amount will be $78,963. Previously, the contingency was 110,402. Um, please note the annual funding level includes Ryan White Part A funding in the amount of 151,899. Um, California Department of Public Health General Fund dollars in the amount of $95,203. And one time Ryan White Part A ending the HIV epidemic grant funding as stated in the amount of $259,020. Um, if you have any questions, we have Beth Neary, who's the Assistant Director of HIV Health Services who can respond to any programmatic questions you may have. Commissioners? Not really questions. So these are all passed through grants. So we, uh, it doesn't touch on the city's like general, general fund. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. There, I don't see any general fund dollars in this. Contract. Okay. So no question. Beth, is that correct? Are you, are you there, Beth? Yes, that's exactly right. Thank you, Beth. Any other questions? No, it's not our dollar. I don't have that many questions. Okay. Uh, item number seven, Richmond Area Multi-Services, uh, the RAMS contract. <clears throat> Requested action is the approval of an amendment to a contract with RAMS, uh, which has provided the department with vocational rehabilitation training program services. Contract was a previously proved, approved um, by the Health Commission on April 5th of 2022. Total, total contract amount with contingency um, is requested at $40,837,235 with the term of May 1, 22 through June 30th of 2028 for a total of six years and two months. <clears throat> the increase will continue to support the Vocational Rehabilitation Training Program Services um, through 6-30-28. The amendment continues to be under solicitation RFQ 21 2020. Uh, the proposed amendment is subject to approval by the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. Um, and the uh, department is requesting approval of the reason for the funding change uh, in the amount of 40,837 uh, is an increase of 31,268,440 due to an extension of the term. Um, we received a question yesterday why there was a 10.79% increase for the similar services. Um, if we are serving 14 clients, uh, is there not a report to indicate what was, what was the result of the services? Um, and then there was a note of the cost per client per month. Um, and what about the client survey? 
Um, the increased funding was to provide additional funding for the janitorial services program um, and employment development program for additional staff, as well as the cost of doing business increase. The cited UDC of 14 clients in the monitoring report seems to be referencing only one of five separate um, vocational programs included in this program. Um, I su submitted a, a talking points document that has more detail, but um, that the system of care provided earlier. Um, but specifically, um, the broader UDC would include the janitorial program, which served 37 clients, the transitional age youth program, which serves seven, the IT vocational program serving 31, um, the clerical um, and mailroom services, which serve 41 UDC, and the employment development program uh, was a program serving 17 clients. If you have additional um, programmatic questions, we have Kimberly Volker. Uh, who serves as the ambulatory care applications manager, and Juan Ibarra, uh, who's the vocational services program manager. Um, they're attending virtually and can respond to any further questions. Questions, commissioners? I don't have questions, but this is an amazing program, and um, and I've seen how it worked, and actually um, it it's really helps folks, you know, like um, who are um, on the path to recovery from like severe mental health um, di diagnosis. So kudos that we continue this program. Well, all these other fundings, not general fund, like are continuing this program. That's, that's great to hear. Thank you, Commissioner. I'm sure the system of care folks are happy to hear that too. Okay, we'll move on to the next question. Yes. The next contract, number eight, uh, a better way. This is a BHS contract. Um, Requested action is approval of an amendment with a contract with a better way. Um, the better way has provided department with outpatient and mental health services contract was previously approved on December 7th, 2021 by the health commission. Um, we are requesting a total contract amount with contingency of 13,579,272 with the term of July 1, 17 through 63027 uh, for a total of 10 years. Um, the, the contract. Uh, the increase will continue to support the program through 63027. The amendment continues to be under solicitation RP 1 2017. Uh, the proposed amendment is subject to approval by the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. Um, the increase of 3,799,272 is due to an extension of the term. Um, and, the, uh, and there's also a, a decrease in annual funding due to the removal of one time funding from the program for last year. Uh, questions received yesterday again was about the um, no review of client satisfaction surveys except by agency, um, which I responded to earlier with the Bayview Hunters Point contract. But just to reiterate um, that each year the BOCC program monitoring evaluates four components in the report, including the client satisfaction survey, um, uh, which is scored, and there's a component of that which um, also uh, is part of the administrative binder where. BOCC staff to confer, uh, review to confirm that the required minutes of the agency's uh, board of directors uh, met and uh, review the results of the client satisfaction survey. So that, that, that's why that citation is there and not meant to suggest that the department is not reviewing those. Um, also, we have Wasim Samara uh, again from BOCC uh, uh, to respond to the question that you had about the um, a better way uh, being likely to make a profit in the coming contract year. And additionally, if you have other programmatic questions, uh, we have uh, Farah Faramond, the director of Children, Youth, and Families, um, who can respond as well. Let's see. Commissioners, any, any questions or comments? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, well, just uh, for me, it's just a little bit more detail around uh, the statement from a better way that they expect uh, to do better in the year coming, what is what? What are is there a little bit more concreteness to that? So, uh, a better way. Historically, they they haven't had you know major financial issues. Historically, they've been their working capital, which is what we use to measure um, kind of like their solvency, was always above the standard. Their um, ability to match their revenues and expenses, so the net income has been around break even, which is the uh, goal for nonprofit. Fiscal year uh, 2223, they started to show, you know, um, some some losses that could be concerning. 
um, they they attribute that to the lack of basically staff. Um, the, they are having basically hard time to fill the positions, which in terms makes it, you know, obviously they don't generate the units of service to to cover all their expenses. Uh, they uh, their response for next year is that they believe with with the Cal AIM changes and some of the reforms are are happening and with their um, you know, basically, they increased wages. They're trying to, um, you know, become more competitive to be able to hire more staff. So, you know, they believe that their uh, plan will come, and, you know, will will work for fiscal year 23, 24. They'll be able to get back, uh, you know, to the right, right level of, you know, matching their revenues and expenses. So, uh, obviously, we, it's kind of like a wait and see. Um, our funding compared to the total agency, uh, we fund, you know, small portion. We fund like ten between ten to fifteen percent of the total agency's revenue. So we are DPH is not the the major major funder, uh, but this is kind of like a you know we will monitor them in the coming months and 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 see how's how's the progress so far in in the new fiscal year and you know act uh, accordingly. Does that answer the, the question? Uh, somewhat. I mean, it's the same issue of uh, coordinating with, you know, the other funders to sort of make sure that, you know, the uh, both the fiscal and programmatic uh, health of the organization is sustained and supported. Um, my particular concern is the lack of, uh, of uh, qualified staff, because uh, that's not just an issue for this organization, uh, but it's an issue citywide, countywide, and so on, and so whatever assistance can be provided uh, in uh, helping those uh, uh, workforce issues. And then uh, to the extent that uh, the ability to um, bring in revenue is contingent on appropriate staffing in order to, uh, to provide services, if there's an adjustment that we can make at some point, uh, rather than having them fall into some sort of, you know, uh, uh, deficit situation, some adjustment about whether the, uh, the, the amount of services that are being asked to provide it relative to the staffing uh, can be balanced, you know, at some point in the future. Um, and, and I don't know how that, how that might work with our department, uh, but in any case, I think that, you know, just the trends are it's going to be difficult to find staff uh, for these types of services. And again, it's one of those situations where, you know, we have aspirations and we have need, but we don't always have all of the appropriate resources uh, and don't want to un unduly unburden the organization uh, in order to be able to meet that. And then also, you know, the, the deficit, then, you know, the community suffers as a result of that because there's expectation and an inability uh, to uh, appropriately strengthen you know, community resource uh, in relationship to that expectation. More questions? So I just have a comment on format. So the reason for funding change and the purpose, it seems like you actually have switched the two. Um, so this is a very clear um, explanations of why you you are in going into um, this five year contract agreement. So, so maybe that should go under reason for funding change. <laughs> and can we get a revised version of, of this so I can post it? Thanks. Anything else, commissioners? Okay, to move forward? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, moving on to item nine, Barty Diagnostics. This is a San Francisco Health Network contract. Requested action is approval of a new contract to continue existing services with Barty Diagnostics in the amount of $2,682,400 with contingency for a term of five years from uh, December 1st, 2022 through November 30th, 2027. Uh, the commission had previously heard this item at the December 2022 meeting. At the time, the department was informed that the renewal contract would be with an entity called Welch Allen Incorporated. 
which was the business unit of the parent company of Baxter Healthcare and a participant under the Vizient Group Purchasing Organization. Baxter, through its requisition of Hill Rom, who had originally purchased Barty and Welch uh, Allen, um, then informed the department during contract negotiations that they now wish to sell the Barty products and services um, through Barty Diagnostics Incorporated um, and not through Welch Allen, um, a different division. Um, and as such, the proposed contract is no longer uh, under the Vizient um, uh, Group Purchasing Organization Authority. Uh, with that, um, the department uh, is prepared to move forward with a five-year renewal contract with Barty Diagnostics. Um, the, uh, I will have to edit this as well because this is also citing an increase uh, 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 is the reason for the funding change of $1,429,312 um, from the previous contract um, due to the length of the contract um, increasing from two years to five years and the reassessment of the actual usage of the product based on the actual expenditures from the prior contract. Um, since the products are dispensed by the need, the department now has a better understanding of the demand based on the data obtained in the prior engagement. There is no rate change um, on the patch. Um, if you have any programmatic related questions, we have Rosalie Ferrer, Director of Nursing for Medical and Surgical Specialty Clinics, who is attending virtually and can respond to your questions. So uh, just a clarification. So the reason for change, uh, the reason for funding change uh, as stated here is separate from the need to approve because of the the diff the acquisition or the merger or whatever the uh, it's both. The okay. It's the name change and the change in the dollar amount as the as the uh, negotiations continued. So, okay. So it'll be, you'll amend that to include both then. Okay. This this is also a retro contract. Are, are we saying that we didn't pay these people for six months? I'm sorry. Could you repeat that question, Commissioner Chow? Well. The first contract ended uh, November 30th of 2022, this being a new contract beginning in April. Uh, what did uh, what, what, what did we do between November, uh, December and April? And actually, since the contract is coming here in November, it's really almost a year behind. The, the contract term I have here is that it started um, uh, December 1st, 2022 for Barty Diagnostics. Uh, I see here that it was um, oh, April the 13th, 2023. The proposed contract term. That's the proposed extension, but you're right. There does seem to be a gap there. Let me follow up with the contract analyst to see. Yeah, I see that now. Thank you, Mark. Um, I mean, your contract term is at variance from what is stated in the block. Somehow. So, are uh, Dean, are we concerned that the, that the reporters may be wrong or, or should we check to see if there really was a gap? I will do both. I will check to confirm if the report uh, is is correctly presented here and if uh, what's the explanation for that gap from this uh, November 30th to April 13th because that's not described in the narrative um, but it is cited here in the header so should we well can we ask Rosalie would, would... Rosalie could you respond to that question or do you know the answer to that Certainly, there is a gap. The contract did end December 2022, and we are currently in contract negotiations. And the new, and the new contract would start April 13th, 2022. But it's they, have, they have agreed, yeah, they have agreed to retroactively okay. cover it. And, and, and therefore, the, the uh, purpose line is wrong then. A term of five years is December 1, 22 to November 30th, 2027. Cor correct. That is not lining up because of the gap there. I mean, we need the correct, you know, contract term, right? 
I will revise that based on the information that uh, Rosalie has shared and send that back to you, Mark. Thank you. So just to close, so are we being asked to approve the for 1323 to 41228 or the 120122 to 113027 contract term could you help us out with that rosalie do you have the document in front of you by any chance the, the the document that we have has two different things um stated so the commissioners need to know what they're voting on one um states the april 13th 2023 through April 12th, 2028. And the other version could be 12 1 2022 through 11 30 2027. We're not sure which one is correct. So, yes, in order to, for, you know, my, from my perspective, it would be to cover December 2022 from when the last contract um, ended. So the start date would be December of 2022, and it would go through April of 2028? Yeah, we would have to confirm with the analyst um, what e the exact dates would be. So it, would there be, this seems, I mean, from where I sit, this is not a comfortable place for the commissioners to vote. So um, since this has already been delayed, it seems to me that we should delay it till December when we get these answers. Um, I'm not sure how that would impact services, but Commissioners, it seems like that's the best thing to do from your side. Rosalie, how would this impact the negotiations or with the contractor? Um, the, the negotiations will continue. We're almost um, complete. Um, and we have, they have agreed that we would be able to order the, the monitors while we're, we're conducting this. Okay, so let's bump this to the next contract report. Thank you very much for that. And we'll, commissioners, when we take it to the consent calendar day, we'll make sure to note this is taken off. Thank you, Rosalie. It, it seems like the language was not updated to reflect the change from the former Welch Allen to the Barty by the contract analyst would be my thought. And apologies for not catching that. Um, number 10 is Chinese Hospital uh, San Francisco Health Network contract. Requested action is the approval of an amendment to an existing contract to continue services with Chinese Hospital for a total contract amount with contingency of $8,960,000 for a term of one year from December 1st, 2023 through November 30th of 24. The contracting authority is RFP 6964. The proposed contract will retain the same number of beds. However, the licensure is intended to change from acute to subacute beds. The difference in the annual amount is largely due to anticipation of Chinese hospital to get their license. The department will utilize the next year to determine ongoing need prior to extending the contract further. Um, uh, the reduction of $832,000 represents an anticipation of reduced rate once the contractor receives the CDPH and CMS certification. The contractor has already received CDPH um, certification and is working to get CMS certification at this point. Uh, when the contractor is certified, the rate will fall for us uh, for skilled nursing facilities from uh, 1350 to $500 and for subacute beds from 1800 to $650. Um, if you have programmatic questions, we have uh, Kelly Hiramoto here, PSC coordinator and special projects manager. Um, and we also have Michelle Lee uh, virtually online to respond to any specific questions you may have. Commissioners, any questions or comments? I have no questions, just a comment that um, um, uh, given uh, the high demand and need uh, for subacute beds, is really uh, glad that we're able to do what we can uh, to move this along uh, and support uh, Chinese hospital. Um, and also save money, in, save money. Yeah. in the process of doing so. Exactly. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Let's move on. This item is Horizons Unlimited, um, which is a BHS contract. Requested action is approval of the original contract with Horizons Unlimited of San Francisco to continue services um, that were previously um, organized in contract ID 10302. The, requ the requested contract total contract amount with contingency is 4,888,733. 
with a term of July 1, 23 through June 30, 27, um, for a total of four years. This contract was previously approved by the Health Commission on May the 2nd of 23 um, for the same services being provided. The Office of Contract Administration has requested this contract be separated uh, per solicitation. Uh, the contract will continue the outpatient program and treatment pre-enrollment late night program, uh, which provides substance abuse outpatient services for youth and young adults throughout the city and county of San Francisco. The contract exercises options authorized under RP 26 dash 2016. Um, the reason for the funding change uh, is the um, uh, annual funding for fiscal year 23-24 of 1,027,900. Funding for fiscal year 24-25 includes a CODB increase uh, for a total of 1,069,016. Funding for fiscal year 25-26 also CODB increase uh, for a total of 1,111,777. And again, fiscal year 26-27, again, a CODB increase in the total would be 1,156,248. The 12% contingency was added to current and future years, and the total for those is 523,793. Um, we had a, a question yesterday related to this contract being uh, appearing to be retroactive um, and inquiring if this resulted in client outcome impact. Uh, we have Chris Lavoy. Assistant Director of the Children, Youth, and Family System of Care, who's attending virtually, who can respond to the uh, questions submitted earlier and any other programmatic questions you may have. Thank you, Chris. Chris, are you there? I just moved you over into the meeting, and I see that you're unmuted. Can you hear us? We can't hear you, but I could jump in there. There was no impact to client services or cash flow for the agency. Right. Correct. Can you hear me now? Oh, there we go. Okay, yes. great. Sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, echoing far. There was no impact to the clients at all. Thank you both. Sure. Anything else commissioners? Okay. Let's okay. Move on. Item 12, <clears throat> Comtel Systems Technology Incorporated. This is a San Francisco Health Network contract. The purpose of this contract is the uh, purpose of this action is the approval of a previously approved original agreement, which increased in total value prior to the full execution. The Health Commission had previously reviewed and approved the original agreement at the May 2nd, 2023 meeting. The contract is with Comtel for a total contract amount with contingency of uh, 1,983,555 for a term of five years from September 1st, 23 through 831 of 28. Contracting authority is RFP 72-19. The scope of the work was significantly added um, um, as the contract was finalized. Uh, soft, software costs were added in, uh, as was a system-wide upgrade of the end of life and end of support PRISM video management system uh, which is a video camera compound of the security system. Uh, we have Terry Saltz, who is the Administrator of Facility Services and Capital Planning at ZSFG, who is here virtually to respond to any questions you may have. <clears throat> any questions, Commissioners? Mr. Chow, looks like you're in thoughtful reading. Do you have anything, any comments before we move on? Oh, no, no. Okay, no. okay, great. All right, um, I think Commissioners, we're that's the last contract, isn't it, Dean? Yep. So we're um, ready for consideration for um, a motion to put this on the consent calendar. These items on the consent calendar, minus the. I'll or, move, yeah, I'll move to uh, recommend approval of the uh, report, uh, less the. Party contract. Yeah. yeah. Do we have a second? So we have a motion to um, move this, accept this report and to be voted on on the commission um, with the exception of um, the body diagnostic um, contract pending on more clarifications. Yes, uh, so I'll check any public comment on this item. Anybody on the line would like to um, please press star three if you'd like to make comment. Otherwise, commissioners, I'll do a roll call vote for Commissioner Chow. How do you vote on this item? Yes. All right, and then the commissioners in the room. Aye. Aye. Okay, great. Thank you. And thank you everybody who provided uh, backup. 
we can move on. And remember, we only have about 40 minutes left. So everyone, if you could um, be as concise as possible. Uh, item four is a, a contract with Civic Edge Consulting. Anthony Taylor. Uh, so, hi, commissioners. My name is Anthony Taylor. I'm the HIV and STI program manager for uh, the HIV and STI prevention and control section. Um, the stakeholder outreach activities outlined in Civic Edge Consulting's contract support San Francisco's Getting to Zero initiative aimed at ending the HIV, hepatitis C, and STI ep epidemics in the city and county of San Francisco. Um, the program is going to serve all ethnicities and populations in San Francisco. But it will have a focus on party populations, which include individuals who are disproportionately affected by MPOX, HIV, hepatitis C, and STIs. Uh, the services provided by Civic Edge will focus on the dissemination of health education public service announcement videos or PSAs across social media platforms. And the videos will educate San Francisco priority populations about testing and prevention opportunities, including MPOX vac vaccinations. Um, the videos will also drive viewers to San Francisco City Clinic's website for education and information on testing, treatment, and vaccinations. And all videos corresponding social media messages and information on San Francisco City Clinic's website will be accessible to persons uh, non-proficient in English languages, including Chinese, Russian, Spanish, Tagalog, and Vietnamese. Um, success of the program is gonna be measured through biweekly meetings with Civic Edge team, in which uh, data progress reports will be discussed and evaluated in order to make program adjustments as needed in order to meet and successfully complete the objectives. So uh, with that, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. My, just a question on um, the duration of the contract. Why is it only six months? So uh, the, um, we received a CDC under the EPIC uh, Comp C grant um, that was a supplement to an existing one, and it was for the period of August 1st through May 31st. Um, and so this funding for this falls under that supplement. Um, and so it's, it's very time sensitive. Um, Any other questions, commissioners? All right, I'll go to public comment. Um, folks in line, if you have any questions or comments about this item, we are on item four. Please press star three. All right, no um, questions. Commissioners, would you please consider a motion to um, put this on the consent calendar? So moved. Second. All right, um, I'll do a roll call vote. Commissioner Chow? Yes. And the uh, folks in the room, aye for yes? Aye. All right, thank you, thank you. Uh, item five is a request for approval of a new software contract with Sarah Bell. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Sorry, good afternoon. I'm Lawrence Child, the programs manager for our neuroscience programs at San Francisco General. Uh, we're requesting approval for a new contract with Sarah Bell. This is a, um, <clears throat> a device that uh, enables us to do EEGs or elect electroencephalography without the use of a trained technologist. Uh, normally it takes a trained technologist about two hours to put 20 um, electrodes on top of the patient's head. And we have budgeted for 2.0 FTEs uh, to do this. This leaves us about 88 hours each week uh, where we don't uh, have coverage. Uh, to fill this gap, uh, this product will do that because it can be placed uh, by any nurse physician or, uh, or nursing assistant. The EEGs are then read in the same way as a traditional EEG by an ep epileptologist who communicates the findings and puts the report into EPIC. It's a standalone system. It doesn't integrate with any of our uh, systems, uh, but it does go over secure Wi-Fi. Happy to take questions. Thank you. Just uh, curious, so, so we've tested this. Uh, yes. Yes, we did. A, we did a trial of it, um, and it is. It does not provide the same level of detail that a traditional EEG does, so it cannot replace it entirely. But it's extremely effective at detecting seizures, which we hope will improve uh, throughput through the emergency department 
and um, reduce unnecessary admissions. And there is, is there a plan to integrate it so that uh, we don't have to use a separate secure Wi-Fi? It's, it stands alone as uh -huh. itself. So it uses our hospital secure Wi-Fi um, and uh, data is stored in the cloud. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, folks on the line, we are in item five. If you'd like to make comments, please press star three or ask questions. All right, no hands, commissioners. Please consider a motion to um, put this on the consent calendar for approval. So moved. On the second. All right, I'll start with you, Commissioner Chow, for a vote. Yes. And then the folks in the room. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We can move on to item six, a request for approval of a new professional services agreement with Maxim Healthcare Staffing Services. Hi, I'm Nita Ritanwongs. I'm the interim chief medical officer for Laguna Honda Hospital. Um, so we're requesting this um, contract so that we can provide 24 seven respiratory care services at Laguna Honda Hospital. As you know, this is um, not only a skilled nursing facility, but we're a distinct part SNF, which means we have an acute care um, hospital portion. Um, and um, in uh, uh, ensuring our compliance with the regulations, as well as ensuring the safety and quality of care for our residents who have complex underlying respiratory conditions, we want to ensure that we have add nighttime coverage for the respiratory care services to provide um, respiratory care support 24 seven at our facility. So we are um, working toward hiring uh, positions um, to be able to uh, fill this need internally through our own DPH staff. Um, this contract bridges us until we can get fully um, staffed with internal DPH um, staff who can provide that care. Thank you. Yeah. Commissioners, any questions? The, there was a question about yeah. the ownership. Yes, the clarification we received from the company was that it is 100% um, uh, the, the first item uh, and Maxim Healthcare Services Holding has 100% ownership. The rest of them uh, are individual owners of the Hold Co., which I believe stands for a holding company. Mm -hmm. um, and so that is why there is indirect ownership of uh, the Maxim Healthcare Staffing Services by these other uh, entities. I don't know if anyone from Bayer is here to answer that more specifically. Uh, so the holding company is the parent company? Yes. Yeah. Is there anyone on the line from Maxim? I don't see. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that doesn't sound right. Uh, could you uh, provide some clarification for that in terms of the owners? Uh, would you come up to the podium, please? And commissioners, please, uh, Commissioner Chow, please ask the question so I'm not speaking for you. Oh, no, no. Uh, the question as they try to answer still didn't sound right. Uh, either somebody has 100% and these are percentages of the 100%. Uh, but you can't have 200% of people owning a company. Yes, commissioners, that's right. Uh, my name is I'm Brian Stugelmeyer. I'm a, a director with our company. So the information that you were provided in that email, I think you're right. It did add up to like 200%, but it, I, I believe it's broken down where it, the 100% is made up for, for those folks listed who have over 10% um, ownership in our company. Oh, okay. No, th thank you. That you're, yeah, you're welcome. I, I realize it was a little uh, misleading. Okay, no problem. Uh, just wanted to clarify that. Okay, um, I had a, an additional question. Uh, so, um, given that this is temporary staffing for uh, Nita, um, given the oversight that's being required of Laguna Honda uh, and all of the sort of improvements that we've been making uh, in uh, uh, procedures and such, are the the temporary staffing that's being provided by Maxim? Are they being trained and monitored in the same way? Will they be subject to the same? Yes, the contract includes all the provisions for required trainings and monitoring, including um, things like fire life safety, infection prevention control, abuse. Everyone goes through the new employee orientation and any um, required trainings before coming to ensure that everyone knows what the regulations require, that everyone know, um, and that they're followed. And um, if we are not able to. Uh, uh, in a time that we hire uh, Laguna Honda staff, will we be able to continue the services of Maxim or do we need to do something uh, as a, another bridge or? I think 
uh, I believe we would need to do another bridge, but um, we're pretty confident that we can do this. Um, so we have one position that is um, in the hiring process right now, so likely to fill very soon. And then we have um, a request for um, two and a half additional FTE, um, which should be approved and um, hireable um, within the year. So we're pretty confident that we can get there, but if we need to, we will do what we need to do to ensure we meet the regulations. Yeah, just want to make sure that we don't uh, yeah. have any gaps and either in training uh, as well as in uh, uh, person power. Certainly, yeah. certainly. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Um, please consider a motion. Oh, actually, let me check public comment. Folks, we are on um, item uh, six. If you have questions, please press star three. I see no questions. So, commissioners, please consider a motion to uh, put this on the consent calendar. Moved. Second. All right, I'll do the roll call vote for Commissioner Chow. Yes. And the folks in the room? Aye. Aye. All right, thank you. We can move on to item seven, um, center point, approval of a new professional services agreement. Hi, I'm David Pating. I'm the interim medical director for substance use services. I adhere to a request and approval for new professional services agreement with center point. Uh, Centerpoint is a um, drug treatment organization that has been in operation for 50 years uh, in the Marin County area and has a long history of providing services both residential and outpatient. Um, in the drug epidemic that we've uh, been in over the last year, we've fulfilled our capacity of residential treatment services and have uh, taken upon ourselves to look outside the county and are now entering uh, into contract with Centerpoint for a total of five dual diagnosis beds to be paid for out of general funds. Um, this would be male residential beds, women's residential, and women's and children's beds, and meet our needs again for dual diagnosis, perinatal, and Center Point has a, a exceptional expertise with forensic clients. So uh, I do have the executive director of Center Point here, Mr. Maurice Lee, if you have any questions about the program. Uh, otherwise, I would ask you for support uh, for this contract. And commissioners, just to note that Dr. Pating was a former health commissioner. Any questions or comments? Uh, uh, just come, yeah. Oh, go ahead. It, no, I was just going to ask to make sure that I understood that we actually have corrected that number to 1.120 million, right? Uh, yes, it's 1.120. It's Five hundred. It's a one year eighteen eight hundred, one year eight month contract. Five hundred thousand a year with a twelve percent contingency. Yes. So one point one two zero. No, no, I got you. I know. I, I know we were getting a revision. I just wanted to know which was the correct one. Thank you, and and welcome again, Dr. Pater. Thank you, Dr. Chow. All right. I'll check public comment, folks. We're on item seven. If you have comment, press star three. I see no comments. Any other questions or comments from you all, commissioners? Just happy to see it. Thank you. All right. Um, please consider a motion to uh, put this on the consent calendar for approval. So moved. so moved. Second. All right. Commissioner Chow, how do you vote on this item? Yes. And then the commissioners in the room. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Painting. We can move on to item eight, a request for approval of a new professional services agreement um, with Horizons Services. So for similar reasons, the department is looking to expand uh, withdrawal management services and dual diagnosis residential treatment. Horizons is a longstanding provider in the Alameda County and San Mateo County uh, areas with a long um, track record of running these services. This is a request for one year, eight months uh, for 6272000 which is 280000 plus per year, plus a 12% contingency. So with this, we will be adding significantly to critical withdrawal management services and again, dual diagnosis residential treatment services. Any questions or comments, commissioners? You want to ask for public comment? Sure, folks on the line, we are on item eight. Um, please let us know if you'd like to make comment or ask a question by pressing star three. I see no hands, commissioners. I move approval. Second. Uh, Commissioner Chow, how do you vote on this item? Yes. Uh, commissioners in the room, how do you vote on this item? Aye. All right. Thank you so much. And again, thanks, Dr. Pating. We can move on to item nine, a request for approval of a new professional services agreement with Haluna Health. Mm. 
Good afternoon, commissioners. I'm, um, I'm David Nish. I'm the director of operations for behavioral health services. Part of our responsibilities are to provide support on budget uh, contracts and project management. Um, we're here today to talk about CareCore, the framework um, to help untreated people with mental health and substance use get the support and, and uh, care they need. We were tasked with developing this new startup program. So we anticipate reviewing 1,000 referrals to Care Court and enrolling 400 San Francisco residents in care plans during the first year. Um, the scope of work for this contractor through Haluna Health is to provide coordination and support for the startup and development phase related to this pilot program. It includes maintaining and updating project plans and timelines as needed to keep the project on target and growing. The contractor also will be supporting the development of documentation and communication tools and materials. All of the activities of this contractor are related to the development of the program in general, not related to the numbers, just to respond to a question that was asked so that the monthly expenses will be the same each month, um, unrelated to the numbers served. Um, and also success will be tracked through monthly um, um, care court meetings where we set deliverables for the next month and, and look over and get reports on the deliverables meant, uh, met for the month before. Questions? Commissioners, any questions or comments? Um, just to, um, I'm not sure if this can be answered here, but I'm just sort of wondering how this is going to be monitored given this is a new, just very new. Uh, type of program, service, whatever we're, uh, category of uh, activity that we're categorizing this, categorizing this as. Right, so I, I could say that the, over, the oversight for Care Court is very intensive and there's a lot of political energy behind it right now. So we're meeting very regularly. Um, this contract is really just for a start person to help us with the startup activities. And so those things will be just monitored through, month, through a monthly report. Um, so this is it's a short contract because it, it um, is scheduled to be over the end of June mm -hmm. and we don't expect to continue it after that. Okay. And uh, does the contract include uh, um, activities in informing the public or informing, uh, you know, the, the appropriate yeah. bodies, you know, folks that may uh, benefit or may want to take advantage of the so our, uh, the, 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 the responsibilities of this contractor will be to prepare materials, uh -huh. to prepare reports and materials so that the leadership in, at DHS can report to the public on these. Will they also be preparing a strategy or is it just the materials? Uh, materials and strategy along with the leadership at DHS. Okay, great. All right, um, anything else, commissioners? Uh, Folks on the line, oh, I'm sorry, yes? Well, no, I, uh, why don't you ask the line first, just so we don't forget it. If anybody on the line wants to comment. Oh, sure. Folks on the line, we are on item nine. If you'd like to make comment or um, ask a question, please press star three. I see no hands, commissioners. Uh, so, so I was just going to ask a clarification, which I think I understood what you said now, that uh, every month we're going to be paying 27,000 whether there is one or 400 clients at that particular month that's being uh, uh, served because it is serving the administration of the program that keeps these people uh, or helps direct these people to the right place is that what what, what this is Correct. This is developing the, all the materials, all the tools, all the communication for that project that is and to help it continue and to grow, but not related to the numbers served. Okay, uh, right. Uh, is it intended that uh, in the future, uh, the department will be uh, one thing to do this through their various units, or is it meant to be that if the care program is successful, that you still would be looking for an outside vendor to help uh, administer this. No, this program will uh, live within our adult and older adult system of care, and we are hiring up for that. And this is this contractor is just working with us on developing startup materials. Okay, no, thank you very much. Commissioners, please consider a motion to put this on the consent calendar for approval. Second. So, I'll second. Great. Commissioner Chow, how do you vote on this item? Yes. Commissioners in the room, how do you vote on this item? Aye. All right. Thank you both. 
Um, uh, item 10 is a request for approval of a new software contract with iSchema View Incorporated. Hi, Lawrence Child again from San Francisco General. Um, this is a software product that processes images of head CTs and MRIs for patients suspected of having a stroke. So when the patient's brought into the emergency department, the images are taken, they're processed by the software, stored in a, uh, in a secure cloud, and then accessed by the neurologists and other providers through a secure portal. We're currently using this system, a legacy version of this system. It was purchased um, and implemented in 2018 by the UCSF Department of, Department of Radiology via some grant money that they had. Uh, we contract with them to provide radiological services. Um, the contract expired in 2022. Uh, the vendor has continued um, the legacy service while the negotiations have been going on. Uh, we finished those negotiations and request approval of the contract. Uh, it is the community standard of care. Um, it's used by CPMC, Kaiser, and UCSF. And unless we can continue using it, uh, it would impact our ability to receive stroke patients from EMS services. Commissioners, any questions or comments? Sorry, just to clarify, I, I kind of... Um wasn't hearing correctly. So this was originally UCSF. Yes. Now we're we're going to uh, have uh, our own ownership of the. Okay. Yes. Thank you. No, no other questions. Thank you. Thank you, uh, folks on the line. If you'd like to make a comment, we're on item ten. Please press star three. I see no hands. Commissioners. Move approval. Second. Uh, Commissioner Shaw, how do you vote on this item? Yes. And commissioners in the room, how do you vote on this item? Aye. Thank you very much, everyone who came to um, present and explain. Uh, item 11 is emerging issues. Just um, given the the difficulty this this time in the report, sort of all the clarifications and such, Greg, it's if we can just to make sure that things are checked and double checked yeah a little bit more retraining with uh, staff on how to populate the reason for change as well yeah and i think um you know the the issue of some of the i, I know this is ongoing and it's not just um it, there's probably a systems issue here in terms of all of the retro uh contracts i mean it's it's something that we've talked about before so i want to make sure again that they're that we're being as efficient as possible in keeping the flow of funds. And I know it's not just the jurisdiction of even our department uh, for that to happen, but, and I know that there are uh, attempts and successful ones, um, but slow progress. Yeah, well, but we, we will remain vigilant in trying to ensure that continued renewal of contracts before the expiration date. Uh, part of it is that items get to us late and we're kind of uh, playing catch up once, once they get to us late. So we do what we can to try to move them as quickly as we're able to. I, I met with uh, Ms. Ruggles and Mr. Goodwin to discuss um, uh, some of the contract issues and they are putting out to bid a um, electronic uh, contract management system, which should help with all the efficiencies. It'll take about a year, but it will answer some of the issues that we are talking about. Of course, between now and then, we have to make sure that we're doing, being as vigilant as possible, but no, there is help coming. Yeah, I, th I think Michelle told us about that a, a couple of meetings ago, but. Yeah. Hopefully that will bring some change and help with some of the data management and the tracking of information of points from A to Z as well. Yeah, you guys need all the help you can get too. <laughs> all right. Um, any other uh, comments on emerging issues? All right, hearing none, we can move on to 12, item 12, public comment. This is the time to, um, the public can ask questions or talk about, um, make comment on issues that were not included on the agenda. Please press star three if you'd like to do that. I see no hands. And so commissioners, we're now to consideration for adjournment. So move to adjourn. Second. All right. Uh, Commissioner Chow, how do you vote on this item? Yes. And commissioners in the room, how do you vote on this item? Aye. 
All right. Thank you all, everyone. Uh, have a lovely day if you've been watching. Or see you at four. Yes. <laughs>